Hey y'all, Stony Creek here. It's pretty easy to take water for granted. Unless your water comes from a well, like ours does. The other night we went to turn on the water and nothing happened, so went out to the well house, did some troubleshooting, made sure voltage was actually going to the pressure switch, checked the pressure switch itself, that was all good, checked the tank, the pressure tank, tank was good so that just left the well pump was suspect so we ended up having to replace that I just want to do a quick video on how to replace that pump that job's not as hard as what most people seem to think that it is our pumps only at 110 feet though so I can pull it by hand if your if your wells a lot deeper you might have to actually use some equipment but I figured at the very least I'll show you how I did it how we replaced the pump how you wire in a new wiring harness and then drop that uh, pump back in the well. Here I've already removed the vent cap. I'm carefully pulling out the wiring harness. I'm going to pull the vent pipe with good pressure. Slowly pull it out of the well until you can get a hold of the support rope. It's good to have a helper that way you've got pipe management as you continue to pull this pipe out of the ground. As you can see I'm cutting zip ties. It should have been electrically taped before instead of using zip ties. This has really created a rat's nest in, down in my well. Be sure to use that support rope to pull your well pump out. You don't want to use the pipe to pull it. Okay, you can see we got the pump out of the hole. First thing I did was remove this plastic spiral coating. You can see here we've got two waterproof couplers. First thing you want to do is make sure your power's off. Then use your side cutters. And you're just going to cut these. Okay, once those are removed, I've already pulled the rope off. I should have videoed that. You'll see it when I go to put it back on. But now we're ready to actually remove the pump itself from the water pipe. When you use these pipe wrenches, make sure that you don't allow that drop pipe to twist at all. All you're gonna do is break torque. Then you can twist that pump off by hand. You wanna elevate the end of that drop pipe to keep the water from running out of it. That way you won't have to prime the pipe when you get ready to reinstall it and operate your pump for the first time. Well, we just got back from the store. I've laid out all my parts. I've got new wiring. After we did the inspection, getting the old pump out, found a few nicks in the wiring that was currently installed, so I figured it's already out. I'm gonna do new wiring. Daylight's going, but uh, let's try to get all this together. The first step in reassembling this, you wanna get some Teflon pipe joint compound. Going to apply that to the threads of your downpipe. Be sure that you have a helper to tell you in case you've missed any spots when you're videoing this. Now here you're going to want to get a helper to support the weight of that pump, ensuring that you don't cross thread that when you go to reinstall it on your downpipe. You're going to snug this up by hand as much as you can. and then do a final snug with the pipe wrenches. You want to make sure that you don't over torque this. You don't want to damage the case of your new pump. And again, make sure that the end of your downpipe doesn't rotate as you're tightening this pump on.
this point I'm going to take the wiring harness that came with the pump. I'm going to lay it out as neatly as I can along that down pipe. Then I'm going to use electrical tape and secure it to that down pipe per the instructions. When you're stripping your wire, getting it ready for the connector, you only want to make sure about an eighth inch of the wire is outside that connector. You don't want the wire casing to touch your splice point. Now this harness has a red, green, and black wire. Green would be ground. The wiring that comes with the pump that's already installed in the pump has two black wires and a green wire. The green wires are going to be connected together because they are the grounds. And then with the two black wires coming on the pump, it won't matter if you attach it to the red or the black at this point. They're both power wires. When you're crimping that connector down, of course, you want to make sure that you've got a good tight crimp, but you don't want to over crimp and then damage that connector. Again, you want to check for the length of the exposed wire just to make sure that once you put it inside your splice, only about an eighth inch distance is going to be between the wire shielding and your new splice. Of course, before you do your splice, you want to make sure that you go ahead and put on your environmental protectors. I'm just going to slide those up the wiring harness just to keep them out of the way at this point. Again here we're going green to green. That's going to be your ground. And then it won't matter on the other two, black to black and then black to red. After you complete each crimp, you want to go ahead and give the wires just a gentle tug to make sure that you've got a good crimp on there, that it doesn't come out of the splice. You can make any adjustments if you feel like when your wires are, are loose on that splice. Now once you've ensured that your splices are good, go ahead and slide those environmental shields over your spliced area. This is going to make a waterproof seal for that splice. Now you use your torch and you're going to melt that environmental splice down to make sure that you have a good watertight seal.
one of the cautionary notes here, you want to make sure that you don't burn through that splice. You just want to apply enough heat for it to shrink down. If you did by chance damage it, there's no way to repair that. You're just going to have to cut your splice out and then do a new connector on there. But it's really important at this point to make sure that that is a, has a good seal. Once you put this into water, of course water's a good conductor. You don't want to have a live electric circuit exposed to the water. Once you're confident that you've got a good waterproof seal, you're going to take your wiring harness, lay it out on your drop pipe. You're going to tape, use electrical tape and tape above and below those splices. That way it's going to help mitigate any stresses on the actual splice joint itself. Now getting ready to install the torque arrestor. First thing you're going to want to do is put your hose clamps on. Just have them finger tight but just so that they're ready to tighten down once you get both halves of that torque arrestor on there. The instructions say install your torque arrestor two to four feet above the pump. I've actually Mine's actually about two and a half feet. I'm going to use it to cover those splices just to help protect that. Now once I get these hose clamps on there and just finger tight, just snug, I'm going to adjust that so the full half of the torque arrestor is going to protect my splices. And then I'm going to tighten that down. One of the things to watch for here is to make sure that you're not pinching any wires when you're tightening down your hose clamp. And you also don't want to tighten it too tight that you're going to damage your wiring harness. But of course you do want it tight enough that that torque arrestor is not going to move or separate once it's installed down in your well. The way this thing works is once your pump turns on, It'll, it can cause that pipe to, to move back and forth inside the case. And this torque arrestor is actually a bumper that keeps that pipe from hitting the sides of the case down in the well. That was actually the problem with my pump. I didn't have one of these on before. And as that pump would engage before, the wiring hit the sides of the case of the well. And it actually chafed that wire to the point that it exposed the bare wire, which in turn caused my pump to short out. Now at this point I'm going to go ahead and take the wiring harness up the length of my drop pipe. Per the instructions it says to put a, two wraps of tape every 8 to 10 feet. I talked to a plumber buddy of mine and he suggested every 3 to 4 feet so I'm going to trust him since he does this every day. Now that my wiring harness is taped up I'm going to go ahead and attach the one end of my support rope onto the pump itself. As you can see, the daylight caught me, so we'll be filming the rest of this and by using a flashlight. But I think you'll be able to see the different steps of the rest of this process. You do want to make sure that this is tied on because this is going to carry this the weight of the well pump itself as well as that drop pipe. You want to gently 
raise your pump up. You don't want to overstress your drop pipe, especially if it's PVC, you could have a chance of cracking up. My drop pipe's made out of that PEX line, so it's got a little bit more flexibility. Be sure as you're dropping it into the case, you're only using that support rope for the weight. You don't want to use that drop pipe at all. Again, have a helper on the other end of your drop pipe. That way you won't have any damage on the far end of your pipe or any of the electrical wiring that you just installed. This project actually only took about an hour, hour and 20 minutes, not counting the time to the store. So it's really not a long project to do. It just takes a little bit of time. Now here you can see I'm going to gently rest my fitless adapter on the side of the well casing. Also notice that I've got that support rope, the other end of that's actually attached to that fitless adapter. Just going to do a quick inspection, make sure the o-ring still seated right on that pitless adapter. And now I'm getting ready to do the same splice connections as I did before. Now this time you notice that the, the existing wiring, this wiring goes to my electrical box, is a red, black, and yellow wire. The way my box is wired, the yellow is ground. So you want to make sure that before you attach your wiring that you know what your ground and what your power wires are. So in this instance, green will go to yellow because that is ground. And then the red wire will go to red wire, black wire to white. Black wire to black wire. Remember to put on your environmental shielding before you make your final connections. When you strip your wiring and you put your connector on there, you want to make sure that there's no more than an eighth inch of bare wire in between the connector and the wire shielding. And you don't want that wire shielding to actually touch your connector. When you're making your crimps, again, you want to make sure you've got a good solid crimp. So once you complete each crimp, you're going to give that joker a little tug just to make sure that that crimp is good and secure before you do the final step and torch on that environmental shielding. Sliding the shields into place. I'm going to torch the shielding one wire at a time. Now I'm going to go ahead and tape up wire bundle to the vent pipe. I'm going to do a final inspection of that pitless adapter. I'm going to make sure that that o-ring is in place. I'm going to check the flange for any damage, corrosion, or any debris that's that would impede the making of a good seal. It's kind of hard to see, but looking down into the well case itself, I'm also going to inspect that half of the flange. Carefully lower your pipe to seat that pitless adapter. You want to use a good positive pressure to seat that adapter, but you for sure don't want to force that or you may damage the pitless adapter itself or that o-ring. It's kind of hard to see with the flashlight, but hopefully you can see where we made a uh, good connection with that pitless adapter, both halves. Then at this point, you would just put your wiring in and put your well cap back on. Well, hopefully this video has helped you out and stay tuned and be sure to like and subscribe and leave comments below if you've got any questions. I'll do my best to answer them and y'all take care.